The only thing that he wore once a year into the Holy of Holies was a white turban, white breeches, a white tunic, and a white sash. That's it. You'll notice I'm barefoot. My sandals are here. It's because we're on holy ground. Once you came into the entrance of the tabernacle, the only way in, you were on holy ground. And you did not bring the dirt and the filth and the commonness from outside there onto the holy ground. Because this was sanctified for special purposes. Well, there are these three segments or three compartments or three areas within the tabernacle proper. But there are also five Levitical sacrifices or offerings. And there's a lot of confusion amongst people as to what they were for. And let, let me just kind of share with you that sometimes when we read the Hebrew scriptures, the Tanakh, the, the Jewish section of the Bible, or the Old Covenant, we think it's all done away with. And no, we don't practice the animal sacrifices anymore. Even the Jews do not practice animal sacrifices anymore because in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed by the Romans. And many of these articles that you see were carried off to Rome. And if you've ever been to the older section of Rome and you've seen the Arch of Titus that commemorated when they sacked the temple in 70 AD, if you look up inside the arch, there's some carvings, in, some reliefs in the stone where you'll see men carrying objects. And there you will see the menorah. There you will see what looks like the Ark of the Covenant or maybe the table of showbread. We're not sure because a lot of it is worn away. And he would meet one of the regular priests that were dressed in all white. Not dressed as I am, but dressed in white. And that priest would come and he would ask him a few questions and he would say what family do you represent the Barbarossa family you represent the Barbarossa family so you're the man with the blessing the head of the household is this your personal lamb yes well he would take this lamb and you remember a lamb is a sheep but lamb designates how old it is which meant it was a year or younger and he'd take and check this lamb. And, you know, you're not supposed to bring one with all its teeth all broken or some kind of fungus in the ears and you know that it's, it's sickly. It, it can't have an eye that's been poked out or it's blind. It can't have a leg that's broken. It can't have mange underneath the backside over here. This lamb represents represents your heart and he's representing <coughs> his whole family so he can't just bring anything so when he comes to the gate that regular priest that ordinary priest checks this out and after he checks it out he asks him what he is bringing this lamb for and the Barbarossa head of the household might say this is a sin offering and if it's a sin offering then uh, I can tell that he's a common person because he brought a lamb. If he had brought some other type of sacrifice, it might tell me his status. But his status wasn't important. What was important is that you had the appropriate sacrifice for the specific sin. And remember, the sin offering is sins against God when you've broke God's heart. So... He would take this lamb, inspect it, and then he would instruct him to come on through the gate and then meet maybe the high priest or another priest at the brazen altar. And I would see him coming, and I would once again ask him this question. Who do you represent? The Barbarossa family. The Barbarossa family. Is this your personal lamb? Yes. So this is a lamb that you have called out of your flock over the last couple of weeks and you have nurtured it. Maybe your kids have washed it and brought it inside the tent at times. And if they're like kids, you know, they, they get attached to it. They might even give a name. So when he brings this lamb, 
It's a personal lamb. This one is tugging at the hearts of the family. This isn't a lamb that they've went and got from someone else's flock. This isn't a lamb that none of them knew. This is a lamb that represents their heart. Their tears are going to be behind this. They don't want to give up this lamb because this is an innocent lamb. And why does this lamb have to offer its life? Because it's going to be a substitute. Because the wages of sin are death. The penalty must be paid for. So this represents their lamb. I believe that's why Jesus probably had a difficult time during the second temple period or Herod's temple when he came and he saw that people were selling defective pigeons and they were ripping off the poor and it, the house of prayer had become a den of thieves. He, he saw a bunch of hucksters. Just a bunch of people getting into the religious system to make a buck off everybody else. Because people had traveled from all over. This was one of the three commanded feasts that every male had to send a representative of the household to Jerusalem. Here at the tabernacle, during the time of Moses and Aaron, same thing, but they were already surrounded. They didn't have to travel to Jerusalem because they weren't in the promised land yet. So this is your personal lamb. Yes. I accept this. Now, the next thing that would happen is very interesting. And if you get nothing else, remember this, because there's some common mistakes. Many people believe that this lamb was given to the high priest, and the high priest sacrificed it. It's not true. This lamb does not represent my sin. This represents the sin of the Barbarossa family. The sin of the McMinn family. The sin of the Harmon family. It's not for the high priest. He would have to bring up this little lamb that represents the Barbarossa family. And he would lift this lamb before God. If I be lifted up. He says a prayer. In regards to the Barbarossa family. And this little lamb. Is sacrificed. Now I told you. That during. Jesus' time, there were so many people coming from all around the region and the world to celebrate this feast, to celebrate, to sacrifice. And there were so many people. And he's got to make sure that he has the right lamb. He has to give the lamb that represents his family. So how does he keep his lamb from getting mixed up, you know? He may be coming with his little boy. What is your son's name, sir? Jimmy. Jimmy. He may be coming with little Jim. And you know how kids are. They can wander off, and sometimes they're in charge of the little lamb, and they can wander off. And my, Jimmy might get lost, but he knows what Jimmy looks like. Jimmy knows his voice. And if he... For Christians... The lamb that takes away the sins of the world. He came with an ID tag that day. It wasn't provided by the head of the family. But the head of the family made sure that he came with an ID tag. Now the Roman government didn't consider this an ID tag. This sign, or titulus, was a, a wooden sign that had the crime or the charge that had been laid against the criminal. And this one in particular says Jesus, King of the Jews, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And it's written in Aramaic and in Latin and in Greek. Remember, there's people coming from all over for Passover. 
And Aramaic may have been like the common language of the people Jesus would have spoken.